Have you ever had this terrible experience? You exit a building where you've been conducting business and start walking towards where you parked your car. But hey, where is your car? Are you sure you parked there? Maybe you just forgot. Desperately, you start scanning the parking lot. Then suddenly, it hits you. Criminals have struck again. Your car has been stolen. What do you do now? Crime Stop Jamaica 311, in association with TVJ, Mussen Foundation, National Bakery, King Alarm, and Grace Kennedy present CS311 with Deirdre Dixon and Leroy Hall. Jamaicans talk a lot about crime, on our verandas, in the supermarket, at work. The criminals are smiling. They think we're running scared. But for the past few weeks, CS311 has tried to show you that we can do much more than just talk and huddle in fear. Let's shut them down and join together to stamp out crime. Our season is coming to an end, but not our fight. Criminals. You are in the minority, and the rest of us will never let you take over. Tonight, we bring you the highlights of CS311 Season 2, but we couldn't end our show without first touching one of our most serious crime problems, motor vehicle theft. Stolen motor vehicle in Jamaica is a criminal activity that is very prevalent for 2016, a total of 1,270 motor vehicles have been reported stolen. The areas where these activities are more popular are St. Andrew Central Division. And in St. Andrew Central Division, we speak of Halfway Tree, the General Business and Commercial District. In the Matilda's Corner Police area, where you have Pines of Karachi, uh, Barbican, Old Hope Road, Hope Road, just to name a few. It is more frequent for vehicles that are parked because they have little or no challenges when they go to steal these vehicles. However, vehicles um, where persons are on board, it will definitely have to be a case where they have to come in contact with persons so you would have weapons involved and this would now turn out to be robbery. So it is more frequent with the vehicles that are parked and you refer to those as larceny of motor vehicle. When they go to steal a car, they sometimes use stones or sticks to remove the pivot windows and they will use implements such as what we refer to as a Slim Jim, is a thin piece of metal that they use to insert through the window, um, between the window and the doors to remove the um, locking system and then when they get in the vehicle they will deactivate the alarm system if there is any. The car thieves sell these cars or sell parts to get cash to finance criminal activities or to purchase illegal firearms and ammunition. Now for getaway cars what they normally do is rent cars from persons on the open market and or even from popular car rental companies and they will use these cars to commit um, criminal activities to include robberies and even use these cars to commit um, shootings and murders whatever the crime is so the, um, most of the time when they steal a car they would not necessarily use that stolen car to, to do these criminal activities because the red flag has not been raised I would implore citizens or the owners of motor vehicles to install proper alarm system on their vehicles, kill switch, or for those who can afford it, the tracking system. And whenever you go out, you just park your vehicles in well-lit areas or populated areas. Do not park your vehicles along the roadway, leaving them unattended for prolonged periods. Car thieves, when they are held, they are placed in custody and they are properly interviewed. They are also placed on identification parades. Case files are prepared and they are placed before the court where their fate will be decided by the res resident magistrate. Car stealing ring is very, very wide and we're asking the public 
So please take the necessary precautions as it relates to the safety and security of your vehicles whenever you park them. And we're asking citizens, whenever you have information in relation to these criminal offences, please feel free to call Crime Stop at 311 or the Stolen Motor Vehicle Unit CTOC at 922-2373 or 922-7322. Car theft is a sophisticated business with every team member playing a specific role. There's the taker who is the man who steals the car. He hands over to the numbers man who alters the chassis and engine numbers to disguise the identity of your car. Others may scrap the vehicle to sell the parts. In the meantime, the papers man sets about getting new documents for the vehicle or parts. Then the final team member resells your vehicle to some unsuspecting customer. More on car theft in a moment. Right now, our featured crime. We may be afraid, but let's expose the criminals. I don't want my life to be another statistic. I don't want the life of anyone I love to end in tragedy. The double murder of Norma Rose Thompson, Miss Norma, and Junior Carcel Morgan, otherwise called Andrew or Pitbull, is a prime example of why crimes of this nature are so hard to solve. No family member was prepared to speak either on or off camera. Even though there were several apparent witnesses, no description of the murderers was forthcoming. One family declined to provide a picture of their murdered loved one, but were prepared to leave the fate of the murderous gunmen in the hands of God. Maybe the grief is just too much to bear. Maybe it's just fair. Either way, as a result, the criminals responsible for these heinous crimes go unpunished and remain free to murder again and again. With Crime Stop, you can share valuable information and share it safely. When we hear your voice at the other end of the line, we don't know who you are. No Star 69, no caller ID. If you know anything about this crime or any other, please call 311. It's as simple as that. Since our first call in 1989, no caller has ever been compromised. Stay with us. We continue with information on safety when purchasing or selling a car after this. Never forget that one of your most powerful sources of protection is you. You don't need a weapon to pay attention and to be alert. Even in the light of day, scammers are on the lookout. Here, for example. Watch it, watch it. No, I like that. Yeah, they know better. You think so? Yeah, get that. They not just move over it. Sit. Yeah, watch out. See how they, see how they, see how they. No. Watch out. No, I'll take it off so far. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. This is your car? Yes, yes, yes. yes. You're planning on selling it? Really, I'm not planning This is the 2005 it. model, right? <laughs> you keep it really clean. I've been looking for one just like this. You don't mind if I take a look here on the inside? Oh, well. <laughs> Get in the car. No! Never judge a stranger on looks alone. That could have been you. How alert are you when walking on the streets and in parking lots? Remember, day or night, always be aware of your surroundings. Be extra careful when approached by strangers, especially in lonely areas. Keep them at a safe distance and never ever allow a stranger to enter into your car. Sometimes it pays to be suspicious. Don't be scammed. Consider another situation, one where you are not the seller, but the buyer. You've saved your money, checked out your options, and you're ready to pay down on the car of your dreams. But, especially when buying a pre-owned vehicle, there are a few guidelines that you should follow. 
Safety Tips, brought to you by King Alarm. When buying a car, check for the following. Check to ensure that the license plates, chassis and engine numbers seen on the vehicle correspond with what's on the documents. If they aren't, seek an explanation and decide if the explanation given is satisfactory to you. If possible, pay for the car by using a manager's cheque or by sending the money to an account. This leaves a paper trail should the car turn out to be stolen. Ensure you get a receipt from the person selling the car. Keep a copy of the car's documents given to you by the seller for future reference. Take photographs of the seller's identification card, that's back and front, and preferably two identifications. If the seller's address is different from what is seen on the ID, write down this address as well. As best as possible, try purchasing the car from the registered owner. If the seller is not the registered owner of the vehicle, ask for a letter or some documentation giving the seller permission to sell the vehicle on his or her behalf. Don't meet and purchase a vehicle in isolated areas such as parking lots or shopping malls. Ensure you are getting the original motor vehicle documents and not copies. Of course, once you have purchased a vehicle, consider installing a car alarm or a tracking device. If you still have doubts about your purchase, take the vehicle to the stolen motor vehicle unit at 127 to 129 Harbour Street, Kingston, or the nearest police station. Suspicious markings on a car's chassis number are often the first clue that the newly repainted vehicle in front of you was in fact stolen. What else should you bear in mind? Well, keep watching. Did You Know? Brought to you by Musson Foundation. For most of us, the purchase of a car is a significant expense, so it's worth it to spend time to safeguard your investment. Ideally, with the assistance of a mechanic or other professional, inspect the vehicle closely for the following alterations. Recent spraying over areas where numbers are located. Overspraying on the firewall, brake booster and booster pipes. A difference between the paint color on the firewall or where the chassis number is located and the color of the body of the car. Make sure there is no unevenness of sandpaper markings around the chassis number. There is no body filler or hardener on or around the firewall or where the chassis number is located. No uneven alignment of the digits in the chassis number or uneven spacing between the digits. Signs of welding at the corners of the firewall or where chassis number is located. A broken or removed factory seal or a seal replaced by silicone. Signs of tampering with or removal of the VIN plate or VIN tag. Welding on the windscreen post and the running board. Any of these telltale signs may indicate tampering and be possible evidence of a stolen car. Without a proper explanation for these changes, you may want to walk away from this purchase. Where there is life, there is scamming, even in the heart of a rural community. So what you saying, Mr. Henry? Good, good. I just coming from Upsa. I spray my color loose yesterday, so by next Monday, I should be able to rape. So them can't pick same time? No, sir. That dangerous for you, man. The chemicals will kill you. Oh, oh, oh. How, how they hack them? I see your trees bearing heavy. Yes, yes, yes. I see it too, you know. The pads, them just need to open up a little bit more. Boy, I tell you, I can't wait. I'm going to make some good money off of this crap, your yeah, man. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll bless still, you know. Yes, my hygiene. Jenny and her sister. Lady, lady, come. Lovely Aki, fresh color low. All organic, no chemicals. Low, low price. Come now. Lady, over here. Come and get your fresh greens. <laughs> Mr. Henry was right. You're not supposed to eat Kalalu when them just spray. I need a doctor. <laughs> Mr. Henry is right. Newly sprayed produce is not safe to eat. Wash your fruits and vegetables properly before eating to lower the risk of pesticide residue. 
if Aki pods look like they have been forced open, don't buy them. And unless you know the source, never buy Aki removed from the pod. Beware of unscrupulous people. You don't know what that means? Go look it up. Don't be scammed. Highlights of CS311 Season 2, right after this break. 13 weeks ago, we started a conversation on how to tackle Jamaica's crime problem. Knowledge is power. And we hope the information we've shared in our programs has made you realize that safety begins with each of us. We can't stop every crime, but we can make a huge difference. One of the easiest and safest things we can do is to continue to talk and share what we know. Here are some highlights of the last few weeks. It was my uncle that molested me at age 12. I tell my grandmother about it, but she did not believe me. For children who are victims of abuse, the first option is to find a relative. Now, failing that, we normally seek to place a child in foster care. Somebody who is not a relative but is willing and able and is approved by the agency is normally used for providing you know, a nurturing environment for this child. So my message for Jamaica and for persons that are going around and committed this act, you need to stop. Each time you raise your hand or it tends to pull down your pants, just remember that, yes, it's a female that brings you here. It leaves scars on us survivors. Leave the children, let they grow. Basically, I tell you, all Jamaica, maybe you don't know me, you don't know me. I apologize, I apologize, I am so sorry. Because maybe I'm not wrong, I had a phone, but in my community, a lot of things go on. And I am so sorry, because maybe we're involved in some of them. I am so sorry to Jamaica, to the whole world. We was in there, we know how it's trapped. We raise enough youth and show them our experience and show them, say, here what? Me, God, them, I know what this is like. The man that make them chickens, all fear man, bright lights, but as well as I say, if you enter it, come like as a step through the door, a darkness. Gus! This is karate. Karate is for health. Karate is for sport. Karate is for self defense. All of these techniques are aimed at soft targets. The ears, eyes, mouth and nose, throat, groin and toes. Jillian is a black belt with years of training, but these techniques could be useful if you were ever to find yourself in jeopardy. It was really all part of the robbery, this rape. It was just showing that you can take, take anything. You can take women, you can take anything you want. First question I was asked was, did you enjoy it? There is this myth that because it's a sexual act, it must be pleasurable. People have no idea of what that victim goes through. And of course, it could not possibly be pleasurable. It's actually painful in many ways, mentally, physically, psychologically. The damage stays. And many, many women in Jamaica get no help whatsoever for this. And men and children, young boys and young girls and get no help because it's silence. I'm talking out because talking out lets people know the gravity of the situation. It is not a sex crime. It is a sexual offence, but it is violence. This is a insert, vaginal insert, and you have the anal insert, which is, is similar. So both men and male and female do this kind of smuggling. These are what are known as pellets. You can have the cocaine pellets or the yanja pellets, and these are swallowed by the persons we term as drug mules. And during the time frame where my father was being murdered, I painted that picture, not knowing that the date on it would be significant. February 22nd, 2016. It's a picture of two birds facing each other. I don't know for those people who um, are into dreams and interpreting, but it, to me it's very eerie that at the very moment my father was being murdered, I was painting this picture. We wanted you to know that you have already started to make a difference. 
Can you imagine that since we started airing our show, calls to Crime Stop shot up immediately? Our show also resulted in action. Episode 3 on children encouraged a 10-year-old girl to call our line for help. She reported being abused by her father and had no idea where to turn and who to go to. Details provided in our Most Wanted segment led to the capture of one criminal at large and someone watching our featured crime segment contacted us to provide information on those who committed the crime. All of these cases and more are now under investigation. Keep those lines ringing off the hook. I can't say thank you enough. But no one can say thank you better than our incoming chairman of the National Crime Prevention Fund, Mrs. Sandra Glasgow. Good evening. I am Sandra Glasgow, newly appointed chairperson of the National Crime Prevention Fund, Crime Stop Jamaica. I hope you have enjoyed season two of our CS311 television series and that you have gained valuable information on how you can better keep you and your families safe. Perhaps you know something that would help the police solve one of the many crimes we have highlighted in the series. Or maybe you know where one of the featured missing persons can be located. We have received very positive feedback and vital information from persons across Jamaica. And we look forward to producing season three early next year. I thank our sponsors, National Baking Company Limited, the Muscle Foundation, King Alarm Systems, and the Grace Kennedy Group for their tremendous support that made CS311 possible. I also thank the very hardworking production crew who put these programs together, as well as program advertisers, Alco Windows and Doors, and Home and Things. I also thank TBJ and the members of the Media Association of Jamaica for their generous support to Crime Stop Jamaica over many years. I also thank the very hardworking production crew who put these programs together, as well as program advertisers, Alco Windows and Doors, and Home and Things. Every Jamaican wants to feel safe to live, work, and do business on our island. But this will only be achieved if each of us is unrelenting in our quest to expose those who commit crimes of all sorts. Remember, crime is everybody's business. And as we always say at Crime Stop, don't hide it, tell it. Solving crime pays. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor for season three of CS311, please feel free to email us at jacrimestop at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching and for your continued support of Crime Stop Jamaica. Let's forget organized crime. Let's talk about organized security and safety. Keep up the fight. Thanks again for watching. I'm Leroy Hall. And I'm Deidre Dixon, signing off until we meet again.